Hi, nice to see you too. Uh, you say the recent rotation to cyclical and to non-growth, that can't last. What's the backdrop for that call? Uh, really, I think a couple of things. I think over the last six months, or really since November, when the uh, Pfizer vaccine was proved to be effective, we've had a massive rally uh, in some distraught cyclicals and a whole bunch of other areas that were hit uh, very, very hard. Many of those stocks are up nearly tenfold from the lows. Um, but those businesses, while up a lot year over year comparisons to 2020, uh, really are still down versus 2019. And, and troubled businesses pre-pandemic are not suddenly fixed post-pandemic. Uh, so, you know, there's a number of, of retailers or, 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 or malls or other areas like that, uh, which were having difficulties before the pandemic, uh, obviously have benefited by stimulus checks, have benefited by interest rates and other things, uh, have been allowed to refinance. Uh, I think now we're moving into a period where uh, we've passed peak in terms of stimulus, We've also passed peak in terms of year-over-year -year growth rates. Uh, now we're coming up to some very, uh, obviously, difficult compares with stimulus and other things like that. And so, you know, I, I think the sustainability uh, of, of those companies, um, well, I would call them some of the trashier companies, uh, is going to be much more challenged from here. And so, you know, there's a few, there's a number of things on the horizon that, you know, whether it's the beginning of tapering, even if we're just talking about tapering, uh, whether it's... Um, uh, the, you know, the, the endemic nature of what, is in, what seems to be endemic nature of COVID-19, you know, tapering in the UK, the US, Chinese crackdown, uh, that we're into a, a little bit more tricky period of time uh, where I think that, you know, uh, high quality growth will win out for sure. Uh, secular um, and not cyclical uh, probably works uh, from here over the next certainly 18 months. Are you talking big cap tech? Because big cap tech and tech writ large had difficulty when interest rates rose. And so if we're starting to think about a Fed taper, do you think that it's going to invoke the same sort of rise in interest rates that we've seen in the past that will ultimately um, bite the sectors that you that you like right now? I think that this inflation theme, uh, you know, the growth stocks have, have historically have had a positive correlation to interest rates. Um, the only time they've had a negative correlation to interest rates was over the last 12 months. And that seemed to be more due to the relative growth of cyclicals and distressed areas than it had to do with the absolute growth rates. And so, you know, I think that those relative growth rates for a lot of the more distressed areas are going to begin to flatten out and roll over uh, as we move into 2022 for sure. And so I think the growth is going to become quite scarce or certainly more, uh, more scarce. But, you know, these inflation themes that we're talking about, clearly we're seeing it in the PPI. Uh, we're seeing it begin to roll over. Uh, driven by some unique factors in terms of used cars. You know, lumber's now down 71%. I suspect used car prices will have a similar chart to lumber uh, in about a year. Um, and so you're starting to see a rollover of some of the consumer prices uh, for, for sure. But interest rates today are 137. You know, there's, there's a lot of inflation positioning in the equity market. Uh, the bond market, not so much. Um, and, you know, we're not even back to where we were in 2019. 2019, we bounced between 149 uh, to 195 on the 10 year, we can't even get there now in 2021. So, you know, I, I think the economy has more work to do for sure. Uh, and there's more headwinds right now than there are uh, tailwinds. So in terms of information uh, confirmation signals, you, you put more stock into stock, you put more weight into the bond market and what it's telling you with, with rates being at 1.366% versus what we've heard from companies conference calls for the second quarter earnings. I mean, we heard a number of companies cite um, you know, inflationary pressures that they see lasting through uh, the end of this year and, and potentially into the next year? Sure. Well, I think that the inflationary pressures, usually in a typical recession, um, there's a demand hit and the supply side is a little bit uh, slower to catch up. I think in this case, we have both a demand and a supply chain uh, hit at the same time. Supply chains uh, were cut dramatically and, and, and demand, uh, X hotels and airlines, did not fall off and was, in fact, uh, accelerated by, uh, you know, repeated stimulus checks. And so you have this lag between uh, the supply chain being able to catch up, who made much, much steeper cuts uh, than was expected, and now it's trying to ramp back up. You know, it will catch up, though. Uh, I'm, I'm fairly confident. And I, so I, I, I am in the transitory camp. Uh, certainly you're beginning to see the early signs of CPI rolling over. And the most of the, the, the push in, in, in uh, producer prices in this report uh, was was through services. And so, you know, we'll see where things go. Um, and we'll see if the labor market loosens up in the fall. Um, but I, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm still suggesting that there's, you know, if inflation was such a problem, uh, why is the tenure still below 
uh, where it was even in, in, in 2019 of that 150 to 190 range. So, so something doesn't seem to be clicking right here. You could argue it's just for central bank purchases, um, but central banks have been purchasing bonds uh, for, for a long period of time. I think the bond market is a pretty good indicator of what's happening.